Hi and welcome to the second half of your MCQs. Well, you have already covered 14 questions, now it's my business, serious business. As you can realize, I've already donned a pair of glasses to illustrate how serious this is. You guys have to really, really put up a good show when you come to PSLE paper and also to be doing it under the time limit, which most of you have already done. If you haven't done so and couldn't finish the paper, you always have a second practice paper and we'll do that in the next lesson, okay? So let's jump straight into question 15. This is a question on magnets. So I guess you guys did this very well, right? Do I need to go through it? Mm, just a quick one. Okay, of course, first you have to write down the poles that are missing. So you write the S and the N and the S, okay? The rest of it, you do it yourself. And of course, you match whether the south and the north, well, they are opposite, so they should attract. But the north and the north, they shouldn't attract, they should repel. So this part is wrong, right? So if you can identify this, then this is not a possible setup. So this is how you do it. And the answer should have been C and D only. Only these two are possible. Okay, I'm sure you'll figure out how to do this one. Polly could not remove tightly closed metal lid from the jar. This is a common problem we have at home. We cannot open it. We need to warm up or cool down one of the parts to contract or to expand. So you decide what you want to do. You have given, you are given four options. So you choose the most appropriate action that you will take to actually open the metal lid from the glass jar. So if you place some ice cubes on the metal lid, you will contract it, right? Ice cubes. So that's not going to help because all we want to do is expand this guy and possibly contract this guy, if possible. If not, we just expand the top. You should make it bigger and then you should be able to open it. So to expand, you cannot be using ice cubes, right? So A is wrong. Place the glass jar in a basin of hot water. Well, this is what they want you to do. And that will supposed to be expansion but we want it to contract so again wrong place the metal lid in a basin of hot water metal lid so this time the top part place it in hot water you turn it upside down in hot water yes you can expand it that way wrap a hot towel around the glass jar only again glass jar only hot towel you will expand but we want to contract so wrong again so answer should have been an easy C for you interesting Okay, you have seen this type of magnets repel question many times, but you always have it in a very different form or illustration because we try to switch things around, try to make your brain work a little bit more. So that's why you have the alphabet switched around like D, F, D, F, E, then E, D, F, and then you're supposed to sort out in your brain what is happening all the time here. So you've got the plastic rod, obviously that's not going to play a part. But you want to identify what D, E and F are. So what did you choose? Two rings are magnets, only one ring is a magnet. Well, the biggest clue comes from the final picture because if you know D and E repel, then D and E must be magnets. Only magnets with poles can repel each other, no other things. Even if it's a magnetic material, they can only attract. But magnets with opposite or like poles can repel. So D, and E are magnets. So you've got two magnets already. So here they tell you the first one, two rings are magnets. Well, that's possible. Only one ring is a magnet. No, that's wrong. Because we already know we have at least two magnets. All the rings are non-magnetic. How could that be? We have already identified two magnets here. So that's wrong too. None of the rings are magnets. They've made it very, very easy for us because we already identified at least one magnet and we know for sure there are two. So I think A is the best possible answer here. Two cubes, okay? One a small one and one a larger one. Obviously, we are going to talk about surface area here because they are allowed to cool. This is a temperature and heat question. Let me underline the word temperature here and the heat here so you can see, right? And they were recording the temperatures, of course, at the start, both were at 200, but we always want to check the rate at which it drops. So whenever we are talking about how quickly heat is lost, of course, the final one is also 3030. But which one is a faster rate? This one is a faster rate. So I put two arrows there because it's going down much 
quicker than this one. You see, very quickly, within two minutes, 105 already. This one is only 167. So this object is still hot, whereas this object is already very cool. It's losing a lot of heat very quickly because initially it was at 200. Then very quickly it becomes cool, which means you can touch this guy and you still can't touch him because he's still very hot. So they're asking you, what's the reason why object Q could be losing heat very fast? So we read on and we find out the temperature. So most likely correct. So I'm sure you want to choose the correct statement. The temperature of the surrounding is 30 degrees. How do you know that? Here. Because both of them reach 30 degrees at the end, so there is no more heat exchange because the outside surrounding was also 30 degrees. Okay? So A is correct. Object P has a smaller exposed surface area than object Q. Yes. Object P is cooler than object Q at the end of the experiment. No, they are both the same temperature. The end of the experiment is after 12 minutes because this is where the data ends. So end experiment will mean here. And the last one, object Q has more heat than object P at the start of the experiment. Hmm. Well, both of them are 200 degrees Celsius. So you may think both of them have the same heat or but is it same temperature is equal to same heat? This is an important concept you will be tested on. Okay, so is it same heat? I'm asking you. It's not. Remember, when you have more water, you have more heat when you're boiling. So same similarly here you have more mass. Okay, 100 grams and 10 grams. So you have more heat in it. So object Q has more heat? Yes, because of more mass, it has more heat. So it's correct too. So how many statements are correct? A, B, and D only. So C is the answer. We have a habitat of plants and animals. Maybe you can call them a community. There you go. It's a pond community over here where the frogs lay eggs and they leave their young to grow. The tadpoles are there living happily. They have some plants and some floating plants and everything is there. Now, what is the question then? Which of the following statement is or are true? So you can choose one or more. First, there are five populations in this community. Yes or no? Hmm, first population, frog. That includes the tadpole because they are the, just the adult and the young, okay? The second population, submerged plant. The third population, floating plant. And any more living things? No, there are only three populations. So they thought you might find tadpole and frog to be a different population. Then those of you who did that will get it wrong. So this is not correct. The floating plants will die after some time as they were not able to absorb water through their roots. Because the roots are filled with oil. Remember they added oil? Let's look at the question again. I'm sure you guys knew where the oil is. Where is it? Ah, the first line here. So you got to pick that out. It's like if you just saw this picture, you, there's no, you do not know, but you can still see the oil. If you missed it, you still have to pick it out here. So there are two indications of what is happening here and that's why you need to pick out the right statement based on that you've got oil so your roots are actually going to be soaked in oil and oil does not allow water to pass through and so these floating plants are going to find it difficult to absorb water so they will die after some time as they are not able to absorb water very good very correct and the tadpoles will swim to the surface and breathe in oxygen from the air as there's not enough oxygen in the water well the oil is up here blocking all the or clogging up all the water up here it also blocks sunlight and there's more oxygen here than there is oxygen here because of the oil so the tadpoles would actually prefer to stay down here than up here because all the oxygen is here as time passes by if the oxygen depletes and there's no more supply then they will start to die but they will never go up because up is worse so they will not go up so it's here they say they swim to the surface which I find it to be wrong as well. So only B 
is the correct observation that you can find from this situation. Okay? Good. Right, something easier, we are talking about adaptations, how these birds adapt to their lifestyle. So we've got structural or behavioral adaptations that we know about, but the question is quite simple. Bird R, bird S, which of the following is most likely eaten? What is their food likely to be eaten? Okay, so bird R, because of its beak, and you know it's an eagle already, although they did not tell you, you know they will not be eating seeds or nectar, they'll probably eat fish and mouse. Whereas bird B or bird S has a long beak and you know from your knowledge that the long beak is for it to reach into the nectar of the flower. So immediately you know it's nectar. Okay, for seeds it's a very small beak to pick up the seeds, right? This one is a long beak so it cannot be seeds as well. So seeds is wrong. So from the circle, I think you know D is the correct answer. I think you got this one. Correct, okay. 21. Food chain time. And do we call this a food chain or a food web? Okay, a couple of food webs because there are many food chains in it. Still, we have to find out which one of the following food webs is found in this community where a community is made up of P, A, B, C, D, and so on. So you've got everything there. A, B, C, D, and a P. Right? So what, what do we do? Food consumer A eats only P. So this should be the way, right? This is the food. When food goes to the animal, it should be arrow. So P should be to A. P and A should be to B. B and D should be to C. And A and B to B should be T. Should be to D. So if these arrows are found there, then that's the correct answer. So go and find. And the answer should be D. Do you still need me to do it? No. Okay, I don't want to do this because I already told you if you found arrows from A and B going to D then you go and tick that one because if it's something is wrong then you just put a quick cross over there then that is not possible and you'll find out why because maybe the arrow is in the opposite direction so you can go and find out how that's done now this one is a bit tricky so I'll take more time to go through it of course you have parachutes you see they're throwing you an example a real life example and finding out whether you know why something like that can happen. Between the two parachutes, which one do you think will fall down faster? Well, a parachute is meant to keep you afloat for longer so you do not fall down with a great force and injure yourself or even die. So a parachute is supposed to make you float. So actually, you are coming down with a lot of gravitational force. Right? And the Parachute is supposed to provide air resistance, higher air resistance, so it equalizes the gravitational force because all this air, initially you fall, will go through you, right? Go past you, rush you. But if you have a parachute, it will catch this air and then it will help to push. So what will happen is you will have this air going into the parachute and help you to maintain the upward force or air resistance. So, now you have a hole, then you're not going to be able to catch this air. So, is this pointless or useless? So, the air will still go through it like as though there was no parachute. So, therefore, load Y will just fall down as though there was no parachute. So, it's quite pointless with the holes because it's not capturing the air enough to provide you for the upward force here. Upward force, you can't maintain or oppose this gravitational force. So, you can see these two are supposed to cancel each other out and you land very safely. So now which one explains why load air Y falls faster, that's all. I've been talking about it, so let's look at the answers. More gravitational force is acting on load Y. Well, if both of them are of the same weight or mass, the same gravitational force will apply. So similar loads, so therefore it should be similar gravitational force, not more. So that word here is wrong. So A is wrong. More air is pushing down on the parachute of load Y. Okay. Is it more air is pushing down on load Y? Again, same thing. Gravitational force and the air is the same thing. So again, they should have the same amount of air pushing down. It's only the pushing up part that we are concerned about. So pushing down because of the word down here is also not more. 
it's the same less force is acting upward on the parachute now force acting upward there you go the keyword that we're looking for because it's linked to what i was just talking about less force is acting upwards on parachute of load y yes because you have more force here being captured look at all my yellow arrows and look at my no arrows here because they can't capture they just go through right through it so no arrow so more force all this force are these arrows and it's more force here here is less force so less force is acting upwards on the parachute of y and that's why it's going to fall faster because you are not able to oppose this gravitational force so this is very strong and this is very weak for load y there is more potential energy in load y than load x before they were released why they were all released from the same height so you go back to the question again you highlight this this is for D. Okay, this similar load, this is for A and B. Okay, so therefore it gives you a clue that D is also wrong. So C is the correct answer. Interesting, right? Real life example. When are you going to go on a parachute? Are you going to have holes on your parachute or not? So decide. Experiment conducted with four different magnets trying to attract iron nails. Very, very basic fundamental concept of attracting okay, material, right? So you've got distance P and then magnet A is the strongest and then magnet D is the weakest. So you've got magnet A, B, C, D and they ask you, what do you think the distance, unknown distance must be if they all attract the same number of iron nails? So thankfully, they kept this the same. So we are not going to be confused so obviously a being the strongest can attract from the furthest distance okay at 50 b being the second strongest can attract at between 50 and 25 so we're going to put down 25 to 50 and then c and then this one less than 25 less than 25 is given by this symbol so we need to find answers that are for x between 20 to 25 so that's mm, 25 to 50 sorry 25 to 51 2 that's all for y you need to be less than 25 1 no more 2 ah there you go so c is the answer so because they match the requirement we wanted quite easy simple for straightforward but still one one diagram here one diagram here one data here lots of data diagram do not get afraid by this okay so it's a very very simple exercise which will have gotten you easy marks but because you're afraid and you thought this looks very difficult you may have even skipped it a wrong move okay so don't do that have a look at it read it and find out what you should do what you need to do, what are the things that you need to put in here, then you go and find the answers. It will be easy.